Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for inviting me to come along and talk about the Independent Commission this morning. Um, I, I think the most important thing to stress there in that title is, is independent. We are absolutely independent, uh, and I'll go into this in a little more detail in a few moments' time. Uh, whilst we're funded by the two governments, uh, they do not have any, play any active part in how we function, uh, providing we uh, obviously uh, conduct ourselves appropriately and uh, provide value for money. Um, just to talk about the, uh, or, or give you an overview of how it all started, uh, the Commission w was established following the Good Friday Agreement in 1999, and um, the, perhaps a very significant part of all this was that parallel, parallel legislation was passed in the, two, uh, in the two countries, so that wherever we operate, whatever we do, uh, we're, we're dealing fundamentally with, with the same issues and, and uh, resolving the same sort of problems. Each, each jurisdiction, each country appointed a commissioner. Uh, the commissioner for the UK, Northern Ireland, is Sir Ken Bloomfield, uh, former head of the civil service here, and the commissioner for Ireland is Mr Frank Murray, uh, a similar, held a similar post, uh, head of the civil service in Ireland. And, and, and really, I, I think our, our remit is, is something of a, a compromise. It's a halfway house. We, we, we're established and function uh, to receive information, uh, to use that information to recover human remains, uh, and to repatriate those human remains uh, to the, their families and loved ones. Uh, and as part of that process, we have to provide an annual report uh, to the governments. Uh, and that in itself is, is a fairly... Uh, straightforward process. They, of course, provide the funding and they want to know that uh, we're, we're acting in an appropriate manner all the time. Um, the legislation uh, is, is quite limiting in terms of who are victims and who are not, a vic uh, who are not victims. It has no start date, interest interestingly, so victims could theoretically go back 50 years, 100 years, but it has a cut-off date of the Good Friday Agreement, uh, and that frankly, has caused us one or two problems because people who would otherwise fall in within our remit uh, are excluded. Uh, the legislation sets out uh, what uh, we can do with the evidence or the information we obtain and what we can't do. Um, it is not admissible uh, in any criminal proceedings uh, and we are, not, uh, we are forbidden by law to pass any information we receive on to other organizations, individuals, institutions, the police, the security services, and so on and so forth. And so, really, there's an enormous firewall around what we do. We find ourselves constantly asking uh, the other organizations, uh, the, the law enforcement organizations, for information about our cases, uh, but, but it's only a one-way street, unfortunately. And that has... I guess that has caused one or two problems in the past. Um, importantly, the remains, uh, as I said at the outset, this is about recovery and repatriation. So the remains, are, are, any remains we recover cannot be forensically examined other to, than to identify them and to make them safe. There was always the prospect, I suppose, of, of booby-trapped remains and so on and so forth. Uh, so that, that's why that bit of, uh, is covered in the legislation. But wholly and solely, this is about uh, identification. Uh, I think, I think um, lines do get blurred a little because we also are responsible to the coroners in the two jurisdictions and uh, it may well be that they will want to know more than uh, we can provide. Um, any remains we recover are obviously subject to uh, post-mortem processes and it may well be that state pathologists or, or, or a pathologist is giving information or evidence to a coroner at some stage about how that individual met his death. But that is quite apart from and nothing to do with the commission. Uh, we are only there to identify uh, the remains and repatriate them. Um, at the bottom line there, I think I've covered already, information provided to us can only be used for the purposes of recovering victims. It can't be passed on anywhere, it can't be used for any other purposes. When the uh, Commission was established in 1999, uh, it, it
fundamentally sat there uh, and waited for information to come in. And in the early days, that that's certainly was happening. Um, Sinn Féin and other organisations provided information, and, and a number of victims were recovered. But by 2003, 2004, that process had largely dried up. And um, I was asked to go along uh, in 2005 and make recommendations on how uh, the Commission uh, could become a proactive organisation and start actively uh, searching for victims, uh, searching for evidence, reviewing cases, and so on and so forth, uh, and, and seeing what we can get. So it was, I, I guess it was a, perhaps a more scientific approach uh, than had uh, happened prior to that date. So we established a small group of, of experts and investigators uh, who currently undertake that work. Um, the ones you see there are, are I guess, pretty obvious. Uh, forensic archaeologists, we have a handful of uh, highly uh, proficient uh, forensic archaeologists and uh, geophysicists, this sort of thing. Um, we also use canine search uh, detection dogs. Now, a bit of a, bit of a, a long shot, I guess, uh, given that, that uh, many of these victims disappeared 30 or even 40 years ago, uh, and, and dogs are reacting to the scent of decay, and uh, I think without going into too many gory details, you know, that, that, that the decay process has, has largely uh, finished with many of these cases, but it's a very cost-efficient uh, and simple way of searching areas or screening areas, so that, that's certainly something we do in, in all our cases. Forensic science uh, provision. Uh, pr prior to 2005, uh, remarkably, I guess, uh, the Commission did not have a DNA database. Um, it relied on uh, victims being recovered and then the DNA process starting. So one of the first things uh, we did was establish a, a private and confidential uh, commission DNA database. That is held by one of the forensic science providers and, and they undertake all our work for us. Uh, th that is um, a, a confidential database. Nobody else has access to it. Uh, nobody can use it for statistical purposes or any other purposes. And, it, and it's... Uh, it's worked remarkably well uh, with, with all the victims we've recovered uh, since that was established. A, a large part of our work is using civil engineering contractors. Uh, every, virtually every site we have uh, is located in a peat bog, uh, and that peat bog almost certainly will be flooded. So the first thing we have to do is install drainage and uh, get, get the ground in some form of, uh, of state whereby we can uh, move plant onto it, we can move uh, professionals onto it and start searching. The other areas uh, that weren't covered uh, prior to this, the establishment of this proactive phase was, was an effective family liaison, uh, and we now have a single point of contact within our organisation who undertakes all our uh, family liaison for us, albeit all, all the members of the team have a good uh, rapport with members of the families. But it, we, we, it, we felt it was appropriate that there should be a single point of contact within our organisation and we should be dealing with a single point of contact within each family. Uh, we're, we're fortunate indeed because we haven't got the, the sheer volume of cases, the numbers that uh, you've heard Dave talking about earlier. Ours are a very limited number of cases. And last but not least on that list, uh, media liaison and, and press. Um, we, we try to keep the work we do and the dilemma, uh, the distress of the families, uh, in, the, in the headlines, certainly in, in the island of Ireland, and uh, having somebody who can manage uh, and advise on media liaison is absolutely crucial. So one of the governments provides that service for us, um, and, and it's not just there on an ad hoc basis. We have somebody whose who's, uh, professional remit, aside from their day-to-day -day work, is providing uh, the media support uh, for the Commission. Um, the outstanding cases... Are, are very few, frankly, but they are problematic cases, uh, as you will see, and I'm, I'm sure many of you will recognise the names on that list. I, I've, I put the list in inverted commas because, you know, what is the list? Uh, and again, uh, 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 an issue alluded to by Dave a, a short time ago, you know, we, we've come up with various other uh, cases since we established our list that may or may not uh, or should or should not appropriately be uh, included or added to that list. 
And um, so it's, it's a living document, I guess. It, it's, uh, it's not set in stone. And um, there are some interesting cases that fall uh, not quite in, in, in one uh, court or the other. So uh, we're always open to suggestions and, uh, and bright ideas and, and uh, proposals from, from, a, from any source. Interestingly, uh, the 1972 case on there, Joe Linsky, um, was only brought to our attention about three years ago following the publication of a book. So that is uh, an addition, a recent addition, uh, but enormously frustrating because it was so early, uh, we find that very few people know about uh, that individual, uh, know about what he did. Uh, he has no close family relatives surviving. So he's on the list, but uh, really we're, we're scratching our heads as to where to go and look for him. Recovered victims, again, I, I'm sure uh, the, the names on, on, many of the names on that list will be familiar to you. Um, I, I've, I've included Eugene Simons on, on there. It was a 1981 abduction and murder, and he was, uh, his remains were recovered by accident in, in 1984 uh, it, down uh, in, in the south of Ireland. Um, should it be on the list or shouldn't it? We, it? It's appeared on lists for, that name has appeared on lists for a long time and it was, frankly, it was easier to leave it there than try to explain why it should be removed and cause distress, of course, to family members by removing it. What we've tried to do uh, since our establishment in 2005 is, is adopt a, a sequential approach to all the cases that uh, we've investigated. Uh, obviously the DNA database, uh, tracing me family members, the closest family members and obtaining DNA samples, uh, they're added to our database immediately. Uh, cold case review process, again, that uh, you, Dave has alluded to, and, uh, and then liaison with the relevant organisations, and we would certainly include the historical inquiries team in, in, uh, in our list of, of uh, organisations that we uh, uh, keep in constant touch with. The site history and survey, um, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. So I, I think you can see from that list, or I hope you can see from that list, what we're doing is developing uh, the, this process from non-invasive procedures to invasive procedures. Once you start, uh, this, you stick a JCB uh, in the middle of a peat bog and dig it up, you can never put it back the way it was. Uh, and, and unfortunately, some of the work that was done in 1999 and 2000 was done in good faith, I have to say, um, at the behest of, of the Commission. Uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, records weren't kept. They weren't kept intentionally because the people involved in it were asked not to keep records. And um, some, of that, some of those areas have been compromised where we, we do have difficulty in, in trying to establish what has been done and what hasn't been done. If we're in any doubt, of course, uh, we, we research uh, the areas concerned. We use, we use a lot of uh, technology in this day and age, as, as you would, might imagine, but the bottom line is, at the end of the day, um, if we haven't found anything and we're confident, uh, if we have information that is corroborated or supported in some way, we, we will search anyway. Uh, interestingly, uh, one of the problems we, we've we have come across is that we receive separate strands of information and because we can't discuss one strand of information with other people uh, we find that we're getting conflicting accounts uh, for perhaps one site. When I say conflicting, conflicting in terms of hundreds of meters as opposed to you know miles but all too often our problem is trying to find the haystack never mind the needle. Um, we have a family liaison officer as I said and, and that, that works very, very well indeed, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, a simple point of contact with the families. One or two problems there, one or two difficulties where, um, you know, we're passing on information, uh, but that isn't being disseminated in families, and then we find people are ringing up saying, what's going on, I've heard this on the television, I've heard this on the radio, or I've read about it in the newspaper, and, uh, and really it's, it's frustrating, but, you know, we do really do try our best. We, we have a, a, an underlying policy or underpinning policy here in that families will always be first to hear about developments coming, uh, emanating from, from the Commission. So anything we do, we keep the families fully informed of 
and uh, we try to make sure that they don't get any nasty shocks, or any good shocks for that matter, uh, from anybody uh, prior to us contacting them. I think the most important thing, and the, and the one issue that I raised when I was appointed in 2005, was managing the expectations uh, of families. It, it really is a major undertaking we're involved in, albeit a very small number of cases. And uh, to expect to uh, recover victims, all the victims now, is, is, is really, um, I, I think, uh, pushing, pushing our luck. Um, you know, we have to bear in mind that these events took place often in the dead of night in barren wastelands of peat bogs. Uh, the individuals involved uh, may have, have uh, been killed in the course of the, uh, in the troubles. They may have died of natural causes. They, they have almost certainly moved on and are no longer members of any uh, paramilitary organizations or former paramilitary organizations. Uh, and, and some of them we do know are, are, as we would describe them, pillars of society. And the last thing they want to do is, is let their families and friends uh, and neighbors know that they were involved in this sort of activity in the 1970s and 1980s. One of the absolute cornerstones of, of the work we do is uh, is the support we receive from uh, the WAVE Victims Organization. Uh, we, we've worked side by side with WAVE all the way through this process and we rely on them uh, to advise us, to direct us uh, and to support the work and the families uh, in, involved throughout uh, the process that we're involved in. Historical imagery is, is something that we, uh, we try to uh, recover um, at the outset of this process. And um, th this is a, a good example. Quite honestly, we, we, having hunted around high and low and talked to various organizations, we tend to end up with ordnance survey imagery, which is available. It's in uh, black and white for the early days, as you can see there. Um, but, it, but it is very useful, and we can then overlay uh, the current on top of that and, and see what differences uh, there are, if, if, if any. Um, do give me a shout if I'm... You're me. almost coming up to okay. the end. Um, this is a, a particularly interesting site because you can see here, or you perhaps can't see, this is a peat bog. Uh, we understand that the victim and uh, the escort had traveled along this track and move up to here somewhere. Uh, and then they took the victim out onto this peat bog. We were fortunate to uh, meet an individual uh, who was present at this event and we said to him, whereabouts in relation to the tree line was the grave? This is the tree line, incidentally. You can see this is a, a conifer plantation here. And, and he responded, what tree line? Uh, and I think that just illustrates the, the dilemmas we have. Uh, that forest was planted around the time uh, of this individual's disappearance. That's what it looks like now. And the, uh, and the major headache we've always had is, well, is the grave inside the tree line or is it outside the tree line? So we have ended up removing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trees uh, in the hope that somehow or other uh, we can establish, uh, because we, we do have a good idea of what we're looking for in terms of profile, uh, in terms of ground profile. Uh, we're, we're hoping that we can, uh, we, we can uh, reach a successful outcome. That work is still ongoing at the present time. Okay, these are just uh, examples of the work that we're doing. Site walking, a non-invasive line search if you want, uh, looking for variations in the ground, variations in vegetation and so on and so forth. Very cheap, very cheerful. Um, I, I told you that drainage has been a major problem throughout. Um, this is a, a drain uh, two miles away from the site that, that we are working on or were working on. Uh, and we asked the landowner when the bog um, drained. And he said, oh, April or May, it's usually clear. So we waited for April and May, and uh, there was still, in old money, about a foot of water sitting on top of this drain, uh, sitting on top of this uh, bog. Uh, and eventually we went to investigate, uh, and walking down uh, the route of this, this stream, drain or stream, uh, we found this. This was a tree that came down in the gales in the 19, late 80s, and, and blocked the drain then, and, and the bog has actually been blocked, uh, been flooded ever since. But you can imagine the, the, the sheer uh, size or scale of the exercise, A, in, in getting 
that out of the way and persuading landowners for two miles that we're going to make a very nice job of cleaning out their drain and, uh, and destroying their, the feeding for their cattle. So, you know, major problems and, and significant cost. Uh, that's the, uh, the, the site. I, I won't, I, I'm conscious of time, so I'll rattle through these. That's the site uh, once the, uh, the land had been drained, and we were able to work on that, and we actually found the victim uh, on that site. Obviously, everything we do is recorded uh, using GPS or whatever system is appropriate. Uh, we work in 20 by 20 grids, and, and everything is superimposed on one master plan. So if we have a, a, a geophysical search, which is what is going on here, um, the results are recorded. A canine search, a dog search would be recorded, superimposed on that, and so on, until we build up a, a picture of, of the hot spots that we, we can have a look at. Another lovely, lovely summer's day in County Monaghan, uh, and you can see again uh, the problems we encounter with, with weather. We've had a, an horrendous uh, time since uh, last autumn. Uh, we abandoned work on one particular site in November because of rain and flooding, uh, and uh, we went back about four or five weeks ago, and lo and behold, we're beginning to suffer the same problems of, of, of the spoil we're moving, just coming straight. I mean, it's just like glue, liquid glue, and it just comes straight back into the excavations. So we're having a, a, a very difficult time at present. Uh, ground penetrating radar, uh, just, just another, uh, another tool in the toolbox. And, and again, as I say, all these various um, systems are, are, all the results of these systems are superimposed on one master plan. Um, I've talked about uh, detection dogs, cadaver dogs. It, it, it looks a bit of a Heath Robinson process, but actually it, it's, it's quite sophisticated. Um, this guy here is, is walking along a 20 meter line and every meter along that line is a little uh, lead marker. He's putting a probe in the ground and then the dog comes along and, and has a, a sniff at every one looking for uh, the, the scent of, of decay. A very effective process. They do work um, very, very good indeed, but I think we're, it's probably fair to say that we're asking uh, a lot of, of the dogs after all this Jeff, time. The, um, I hit the to round you up, but I guess okay. you're coming towards the end anyway. Okay, I'll, I'll just rattle on uh, to the end, if I may, um, really to, to try to draw all this together. Okay, I, I, th I think to conclude, uh, the Commission, the Independent Commission for the Location of Victims' Remains, is not a missing persons bureau, uh, and we're often confused as being just that. The legislation uh, that, that enables us to undertake our work is not time limited, and currently our activity is not time limited either. But there is going to come a time, again, the same, the same issue that, that uh, the historical inquiries team are, are um, trying to struggle with, is, is you know, how, how do we reach an appropriate point to say we've achieved everything we can and, uh, and, and go into some form of, of standby mode or, or post-active phase. I think we've, we've persuaded the governments that to wrap the whole thing up would be an absolute disaster because there would be no conduit uh, for information uh, to come into the, to the Commission and, and be uh, acted upon or processed. Another important factor is that the historical inquiry team, as, as you've heard this morning, is due to review all our cases at some stage, and we're currently talking uh, to Dave and his colleagues about how that process may take place uh, and, and when it would be appropriate to start it. Um, it has some dilemmas for us because, uh, you know, perceptions are everything out there, and, and whilst we can say that we've recovered several victims and nobody's ever been prosecuted or arrested or, um, or, or interviewed in any shape, size or form, sooner or later a separate body is going to take on the reviews of these cases, but it will be nothing to do with the Commission, and we are most anxious to make sure there is absolute clear water between what we are doing and any information we receive with a view to recovery and any information that other organisations may seek or, or indeed recover. I think, last but not least, um, this, uh, this structure, this unique structure, has caused a great deal of interest uh, overseas, uh, and uh, the International Red Cross talked to us on numerous occasions saying, you know, perhaps we could import this, or export this island model elsewhere. Uh, 
my co a colleague and I uh, uh, went to the United Nations in Geneva a few months ago and uh, gave a presentation there. And likewise, uh, when you look at the war zones and, and, and areas of, 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 uh, of previous troubles around the world, mm. you can see that this model, uh, it is a halfway house. Uh, it is not the ideal solution uh, for families, but many are quite satisfied with the outcome. I, th I think it's got great merit, and uh, I would hope that uh, it is used, it is taken up elsewhere in the future.